Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a temperature chart. Basically what we're doing is we're charting out temperatures, the high, low, and average uh, temperature values. And in this case, th these are New York time, New York City temperatures in the month of November. So we can do this various ways. We can do a line chart or a combination chart. But uh, another nifty way to do it is using the stock chart. So basically the chart that we, you would maybe use for tracking a stock ticker symbol uh, over time periods, we can actually use that type of chart to track temperatures. Now what we would do is we'd have a high temperature, a low temperature, and an average temperature. So this would almost equate to the high price of the stock, the low price of the stock, and the closing price of the stock. So it should be in this order, high, low, and then average. And then we can chart out uh, the trend for the temperature in this case. So let me show you how that's done. Oh, and also I'll show you how to, we can put this specific type of formatting for degrees. Uh, these are measured in Fahrenheit right now. And I'll show you how to add that custom number formatting. So let's go ahead and copy this formula. I believe I already copied this formula into another sheet here. And so we have our values here. So we have our values here for the temperature. And all we need to do is just click anywhere within the range as long as there's no broken or empty cells here. Uh, it, will also, it will select the appropriate range for our table, for our chart. So after that's uh, done, I'm just going to select anywhere in the table here. Go to Insert. And you can see here, there's not really uh, a chart here that says stock ticker chart. And uh, you, there's a combo chart. Uh, there is this line chart. You think it might be in there, but it's not. But so what you need to do is you we just go into the recommended charts and it'll bring up the insert chart dialog box. And we can just go into the all charts tab and we'll look up the stock chart. And so the one the one that we want is the high low close because that's going to look for the three uh, series of data that we want, the high, the low, and this close. We'll just substitute average for that. So I'll go ahead and select that, click OK, and you'll see that my chart is kind of built out already. So we can see we have most of the chart already kind of laid out for us. And if I want, just want to take the easy approach, I can just go into the chart styles and take a look at see some of the chart styles. You can see that if I select this one, a lot of it's already done where the formatting where we have our marker, you need the, these, um, these circles are already kind of look in a nice size and we have the alignment of our category down here done well. But I'm going to go ahead and not do that. Let me go ahead and just click outside and control Z to undo that. So let's not do that. Let's actually go, go through and kind of reformat this chart by scratch so you kind of get an idea of what uh, needs to be done. So I'll go ahead and, and go under uh, the chart elements here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, ad update or adjust the formatting axis. I'm going to go under, click on the axis, you can see the checkbox is there, it's already checked. Uh, I'll go under more options here and it's going to bring up the format axis pane. And I want to make sure that this uh, this axis is aligned up and down uh, more or more um, vertically rather than slanted like. So I'm going to go under the um, size and properties here and text direction. We can see that the text direction is horizontal and maybe because the chart uh, area is kind of small it kind of pushes it to be diagonal. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's uh, rotated 270. So it takes more of a vertical slant no matter if we uh, make the chart smaller or bigger. Uh, I wanted to always have that vertical slant. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and close this and make it a little bit longer here. Make it a little longer here. Uh, that works out just well. So I'm going to go ahead. That's done. Let me go ahead and remove the grid lines here because they're just kind of extra information here. And what I want to do next is I want to go ahead. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, a little bit bigger here so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, let me move this up a little bit. So what I want to do next is I want to make sure that these markers are a little bit more pronounced. So if I, then that marker is our average price. So if I click on that, you can see that it's all selected right here. So I can also go into the chart elements, click on this to bring it up. But another way to do it, another way to bring up the, the pane for that is to press control, the number one. And that's gonna bring up the formatting data series uh, pane. So what I wanna do here is I wanna adjust those markers. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can click on the mark. It seems like it disappears. So I want to make sure these markers are selected. Now let me go, oops, I only selected that one. Let me go click outside of that. Click the markers again, and uh, I have the markers selected. So I'm going to go under here. Let me see, let me find the markers here. So it's under this paint bucket. I want to go to this marker here. And what I want to do is I want to change it. So under marker options here, let me change it. Instead of having the built-in one, let me go ahead and I think I actually like the circle one. So I'm going to make keep it a circle, 
but make it bigger maybe make it a size 5 you can see the size 5 looks like it it went up to a pretty good size and uh, I think for the fill let's keep it at gray or maybe we can make it a little bit more pronounced so the, the fill let's let's make that a solid fill and we make the color red and the border the border that's around that I'm gonna go ahead and say no border you can make also make it solid and make it red but I'm just gonna say no border so I don't have to worry about that so that one is set let me go ahead and uh, move this over here so I can see it a little bit better what next I want to do is I want to go ahead and change the uh, formatting here where it looks like it's degrees and not uh, just a plain old number so I'm gonna select that and then I'm gonna change it to a customized uh, custom format so let me go under text options and let me see actually let me go under access options I believe and maybe it's at the bottom here uh, yeah, under number and then for the category I'm gonna go under custom I've already created it from an earlier one so this is what it looks like uh, basically the hash mark is any any place where there is a number that could be in, entered in there uh, put that number there uh, it's a placeholder for the number and we have this little circle which indicates degrees and that's actually a symbol um, you can't really find that uh, in here you're gonna have to enter it yourself I believe actually I selected this one because you notice that when I created this one um, the zero didn't show up here but if I select this one the zero will show up and so what basically they are um, you can think of it as arguments that are separated by the semicolon. The, the first argument is how we want to format positive numbers. The second one is how we want to format negative numbers. Uh, the third one is how we want to format blank. There would be a fourth one here, and that would indicate how we want to format text. But since there's no text here, uh, I didn't add that in there. So you, you may find that you know you can you can use your keyboard to enter this hash. That's basically just shift and then the number three, and of course. Uh, the other ones are colon and, and, and the zero are self-explanatory but how do we get this little circle to indicate degrees well what you need to do is you need to insert a symbol there so you just go to any cell go to insert and insert a symbol and the symbol is it's under the font symbol font and uh, it's actually this one which is character code 176 so if you're going to a symbol font you can actually look it up uh, I believe if you kind of scroll down, you'll probably find it somewhere here. Uh, and if you can't find it just by scrolling, or it does, you just don't have uh, you don't have the patience to look for it. Go ahead and just type. Uh, well, let me go click this. Go ahead and just type 176 from symbol and uh, click insert. You notice, and then go click close, and you notice now it's there. And so what I would have to do here is take that and do a Control C to whoops select this one let me go select it here in the form of the bar control C to copy let me go back into the uh, format here and go down to the bottom where it has numbers and, and basically when I was entering this information in I would type a the hash sign and then control V to paste that in there so you can see if I had another semicolon and do control V I pasted that little circle in there to indicate the degrees uh, and incidentally this is in Fahrenheit so I would just have an access label that says Fahrenheit so after that's done what I can do is uh, actually I can probably put a label here uh, for Fahrenheit and so if I go under the chart elements and go into axis titles let me go here and do the vertical axis right uh, I'll go and click that you'll see that there's a checkbox there's a box here that lets you type in text so I'm just gonna go ahead and type um, uh, let's see, I just type F for Fahrenheit. So I can just type in Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, hope I spelled this correctly. All right, and so we have our Fahrenheit there now. Uh, I also kind of showed in my previous example, this was uh, on the top. So, so let me go ahead and move this to the top. You don't, ha you don't necessarily have to move it like that. You can have uh, Excel do it for you. Uh, let me go ahead and find out where the, uh, let's see, legend options. Uh, that's the box so I think we are looking at here uh, under the legend options here we want it at the top and so I'm gonna put that at the top let me go ahead and close the pane here and go ahead and delete this and we have our chart and so in the chart title I'm just gonna call it I'll, I'll give it a name now and I'll just call this the uh, New York attempts right and go ahead and just uh, remove the grid lines and just kind of clean this up a little bit 
So if there's something you want to present, you don't want to have the grid lines here. They're just a kind of extra visual uh, uh, noise. Or, or we can just take this control C to copy and put it into a PowerPoint slide or PowerPoint presentation. But basically we have our, our trend. We have our line that shows uh, temperature. So on the top, if you kind of hover over here, uh, you'll notice that there's a, there's a little uh, tip that comes up and tells you the high, it's the high, 59.4. You can see it's cell B2, 59.4. If you kind of hover over the bottom of this, it tells us the low, and this is 46.6. And then if you hover over the red part, it's the mid, 51.4. So the, of course, this is also called this can also be called candlestick or or stock uh, a stock chart. But this is a way that we can use a stock chart to kind of show uh, and trend out uh, temperatures. So when we have a high, low, and average. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.